Mike, you're live at the Blue Cross Arena, just getting ready to start the second half of this game. And boy, do the Buffalo 716ers want a totally different second half than that first half. Rochester leading it by 20, 53-33. The stats don't lie. You talk with Jerice Crouch, he's leading all scorers. Yep, Jerice uh, with 22. I was three off on my math. You know, we talked about turnovers early in the game as well. And in terms of those, it's 13-8 in uh, favor of uh, Rochester with the, the fewer turnovers, but uh, free throws fairly even. Eight of 12 for both teams, and Rochester putting up a whole lot of shots. 19 of 55, just 34% field goal shooting, and for Buffalo, 26%. It was not a good second quarter for either team where Rochester outscored Buffalo 20 to 15, but the Razor Sharks have been fulfilling or reaching their defensive goal of holding teams to less than 22 points a game. They did it to Buffalo in the first with 18 points and then in the second with 15. So in terms of uh, three-point shooting, which I just slid over, 35% for Rochester, just 11%, one of nine for Buffalo. Rochester, seven of 24. Those belong to Jerry's Crouch who, like, on December 21st, took over the game. He's done it here today as well. Well, the, the stat that doesn't lie is the 13 turnovers by Buffalo and Rochester out-rebounding. When you win those two categories, that basically tells you everything you need to know. Now, for Buffalo, they have been talking a bit about this offensive power. We have not really been able to see it consistently. We definitely didn't see it in the first half with only 33 points in two quarters. We're going to need to see that here in this third quarter of any of the quarters they needed. The third is the one that will make the fourth worth watching here on ESPN3. So it, it is very interesting to see now that they're clearing off some stuff off the court and uh, getting ready for action here. It'll be interesting to see how Buffalo comes out offensively. One of the leading scorers I thought was interesting for was Buffalo's 7-1-6ers Antonio Speed, who we really didn't see too much of in the second quarter. He got all those points in the first quarter, and for some reason, I, I had no idea why he wasn't back in the game and used more offensively in that second quarter for Buffalo as they bring him off the court for a second. Yeah, they got to uh, clean a few things up, and we didn't see much of Robert McKeever either. He only had two fouls. Nobody's in foul trouble for the Buffalo 7-1-6ers. Although Gabe Freeman had three for Rochester, and you, you said that Speed didn't score much in the second quarter. He didn't score any in the second quarter. In fact, it took the Buffalo 7-1-6ers down to the 7-36 mark until they scored, at which point Brandon Carruthers put up four straight points. Brooks, Gatewood, that's it. There were three scores in the second quarter for Buffalo. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly what happened, but Anthony Stover is over there. And uh, the reason why there's a delay is because somebody spilled, I believe, a drink near uh, one of the ends of the court. So the uh, And it just happened as the buzzer had went off to get ready to start the third quarter. So that's why the delay is taking place. They were cleaning that up because it was on the court. Um, one of the benefits of having courtside seats is it. You're close to the action, and one of the downfalls is if you mishandle your drink or one gets knocked into you, you know, you got to delay the game a little bit. Yep. Back to live action. Ball stolen away off of the knee of Holmes. Scoop layup by Freeman is yep. no good, but Ralphie Holmes with the follow-through. I had faith in you. I had faith in you there. Well, they worked hard for that. Meanwhile, back on the other end, Mr. Antonio Speed, who the Buffalo 716ers are going to need here in this third quarter to mount a comeback. They're, they're going to need three scores, just like they needed back on December 21st and did not get. Stubbs also having a rough game today with McKeever, who now has the basketball one-on-one -on -one with Allman. Step back, wanted to draw the foul, gets it off glass and in for two. That's just a good play by Robert McKeever. Yep, didn't rush that time. We saw him going full steam ahead in the first half, and that was not working. He was outrunning his team as well. 
McKeever with Allman on him. Jumper by Freeman off the front of the rim. No good. Oh, Stover, and Stover took a hit, bounce. And Stover hit the deck hard. Oh. I, I, I'm I, assuming there was some contact there, but wow. He went up for a shot. Or he went up for the rebound. Let's take a look here. You yep. can see as they were passing the ball. This is the jumper by Freeman Here we go. going up. Oh, Speed cleared him out with his right hand. Speed's going to get called for the foul here. So let's see if Stover's all right. Not, not flagrant, but Stover's in pain. Yeah, hey, look, you're that big and you fall. That's going to hurt. It's yeah. like Coker. Stover's going to come out. Coker's going to go in. Stover's going to walk off slowly. It looked like a good call from where I sat. Inbounds from Holmes to Crouch, setting up the offense. Holman back over to Crouch. Two-man game with Freeman in the middle. Down low to Holmes, reverse layup no good. And saved before it went out of bounds by Holmes. Marcus Hall coming down with a uh, deflection there. Delay Coker let Hall know he was there. Delay Coker doesn't believe it. Get an offensive foul call. Uh, Dele Coker. So things a little testy here with Buffalo and Rochester to start the third quarter. Well, Jerez did read that Facebook post that said we've got the best backcourt in the PBL. He was not happy with it. And McKeever with the pass a little long. Stubbs moved out of the way, uh, but in the wrong direction from his teammate away from the defender, and that goes out of bounds. Crowd slips but gets it back. Knocked away by McKeever. Off to the races. They're not going to catch him. He's going to cash this in for two. So McKeever capitalizing four points in the quarter here. And as Tariq said, they got to get off to a good start. Jerese Crouch with a pull-up jumper. Two minutes gone by here in the third quarter. He's got 24, Tariq. Jumper good on the right side in that corner by Hall. So Marcus Hall and Crouch is fouled. And Robert Spawn and Jeff Stubbs talking. Uh, Spawn saying you can't hand check out here. Oh, I didn't know if he was talking to the referee. He's talking, no, he's talking he's to Stubbs. Jeff Stubbs. The guard for uh, Buffalo. I think Robert Spawn will get into a debate with anyone. He's been doing this long enough that I, he feels comfortable doing that. Well, that's he's right most of the time. That's the yeah, other end, too. That's true. That's why he's a head coach. All back the other way with Carr. Reverse layup is good. Glenroy Carr and a timeout by Spawn as he's yelling for it and finally does get it. He does not like what he has seen here. 9.28 left to go here in this third quarter. Rochester leading it 57-44. to 44. Buffalo, this is what they wanted. This is what they've been looking for. You can see here on the replay, they're talking, moving the ball around, catching guys out of position. Nice reverse layup there. They've got an 11-4 run to open the quarter, and we just go back to what you said. That the third quarter is going to be an important one. It's got to be an important one for Buffalo, certainly coming out of the gates. You know, if they came out and fell flat here, it would be uh, a runaway for Rochester. But Buffalo's going to try and make it a game here. So with 9.28 left to go here in this third quarter, the Razor Sharks coming out. A little flat here. Buffalo a little physical. Still plenty of time to go in this game. But this is what Buffalo wanted to do. Get to a point where they can continue to be aggressive offensively. Well, for the uh, Buffalo 716ers here in this quarter, Speed coming out with his 10th point of the game. McKeever only has six right now. And Hall with his first bucket. So. They're, they've gotten into it. They're ready to go here. Buffalo is. Now will Rochester do it with only two buckets and then the timeout by Robert Spahn. Rochester raises Sharks with Jerese Crouch running the point, brings it across midcourt with Stubbs setting them up. Buffalo talking defensively. 
Freeman, top of the key, swings it over. Holmes, baseline jumper. Rochester needed it. Stolen away by Holmes. Holmes, baseline. Gets it up and, and can't get it to go. Ralphie needed that one. He's got five points in the game. He and Crouch, the only scorers here in the third quarter, second half for Rochester, who did not go to the line at all in the second quarter. They went to the line five times in the first quarter. Ralphie Holmes is that energy the Razor Sharks need. First free throw is good. They and just picked him up. Too. Is this second game with Rochester? And starting. Third, I believe, and starting. So, you know, he's been around. Just gets it to go. Very active, deceptive. Not tall, but plays a little bit taller than his, than his height. Oh, uh, that's, that's a, a hard, hard foul. foul by Dele Coker who walks away. Probably a good thing that he did. And it has been a very physical game on both ends between Rochester and Buffalo. But you know Speed, the leading score for Buffalo right now, you've got to put a body on him. That's a good foul. Well, he has been the lone bright spot for Buffalo's offense. And the first free throw is good, so Antonio Speed. And now Darren Moore will check in. Meanwhile, the shooters for Buffalo have just not been on point today. Now, if you look on the other end, the Razor Sharks, Corey Allman has not gotten off either. It has been the Jerry's Crouch show this entire game. Yeah, yeah and then the scoring's been fairly balanced for Rochester as well. Holmes and Durich with three coming into the half. Stover and Moore with a pair. Alm in the second leading score with eight. As Ullman waiting for the offense to set up. Double team Moore swings it back out. Ralphie Holmes couldn't get it. Aaron passed there as Moore was in trouble. Buffalo comes back here on February 28th, their last trip here. Rochester will be there on the 31st and on March 21st. So these teams have three more games against each other, and uh, there is no doubt they will be competitive games. McKeever, baseline, gives it up Stubbs. Out to Hall, thought about it, jumper, no good. Rebound it, tipped around, speed with it, puts it back up and in. Antonio Speed. With 12 on the, in the game for the 7-1 Sixers. 61-48. This is not what Rochester was looking forward to in the third. This is exactly what Buffalo has been waiting for. Coker, reverse layup is good. Went right around him baseline. And in for two. For Gelli, that may be his first of the day. It's not. It's his third. First of the second half. Oh. McKeever draws the contact. Can't get the shot to go. He wanted it on Coker. Couldn't get it. Back the other way. Cross court. Allman thought about a three. Lost it. Finally got it back. Ralphie Holmes. Baseline. No good. Rebounded by speed. Back the other way comes Buffalo. McKeever across midcourt. Going right at Crouch. Crossover and in for two. Change directions in front of two other Razor Sharks. and He gets the basket there, making it look easy, but it's been a very difficult day for McKeever, who's got eight on the day. And what was a 20-point lead for Rochester has been trimmed down to 13. As the Razor Sharks offense not coming out here in the third quarter. Jumper by Dele Coker is no good, but Moore cleans the glass and puts two in. Good to see Darren Moore get in on it. Coach Spawn yelling in my ear, even though he's 10 feet away, we need a stop because the offensive groove for Buffalo starting to worry head coach Robert Spawn. Yep, Coker got called for the foul there. And so he's going to come out. 17 to 12. Rochester is being outscored here in the third quarter. Stubbs with it for Buffalo. He's got Randall on him. Gives it over to McKeever. McKeever one-on-one -on -one with Crouch. Seven on the shot clock. 
Step back jumper. Foul called. Shot doesn't go. But Robert McKeever heads to the free throw line. This is where Buffalo can slowly creep back into this game. Stop the clock. Get to the line. Draw some fouls. Jarese Crouch, you want him in foul trouble? First time to the line here for Buffalo in the third quarter. Tawan Slaughter talking now to Glenroy Carr, trying to establish and continue to improve on their offense on this end of the court. Meanwhile, Robert McKeever, second free throw, no good. Stover skies for the rebound. Rochester will bring it back. 6.20 left to go, third quarter. McKeever has made three of four from the line. Good to get one there for Buffalo. Randall, key, and it's a foul away from the basketball. Nope. We're going to get a defensive three-second violation. So this will be a technical foul. Not charged as a personal foul, but speed is out of position. So Jarese Crouch will take the tech here. Crouch makes it. So that was actually a, a very rare mismatch where I believe Stubbs was on Stover. And that's not the matchup you want. And now they've got the right matchup. Crouch slips, falls. They give it to Stover. He's blocked by Hall. And he's hurt as well. He says his elbow. That is probably from the fall earlier. Dele Coker is going to come in. Stover's coming out, and as soon as he got hit on that elbow, he turned right over and said, this isn't going to work. Now, is that his left elbow? Because his right elbow is bandaged. But he was holding his left elbow, so he's... He's fighting it, too. You can see in his face. He's fighting that pain. And so he's going to the line. Six oh four left to go here in this third quarter. Deli Coker is going to come in for Anthony Stover. The first one's no good. A couple of changes. Brandon Carruthers, who was a bit of a spark in that second quarter for Buffalo, out on the court with Kelvin Agee. Hall and Stubbs will take a seat. And Stover has to shoot the fouls here. If he asks for a sub, he cannot come back into the game. And in and out, and almost went down, but comes back out. So Stover couldn't make either one of the free throws, as he's going to have to battle through to the next whistle. Carruthers over to A.G. A.G. now working hard against Carr. Can't get it to go. Tipped around. Put back by guess who? Antonio Speed. So Speed's got 14. And Stover is coming out here. 540 Island. left to go here in this third quarter, and it's gone the way the Buffalo 716ers have wanted it to go. Thank you for those watching on Soul of the South Network, ESPN3, and the Rochester Razor Sharks Broadcast Network.
Back here live at the Blue Cross Arena, 66-53, Rochester with the lead over the Buffalo 7-1-6ers. Still plenty of time to go here in this third quarter. 540 left. Rochester not sure what's going on with their offense, but not looking good here in this third quarter. Exactly what Buffalo was looking for, Kevin. Well, I got three guards in there now with Allman and Randall and Crouch. This is not a combination you see much, so perhaps they're looking to spark up the scoring. And Moore and Coker. Looks a little bit like last year's team. McKeever stops, pops three, bang. Needed it, wanted it. Buffalo drawing just a little bit closer now. The deficit is 10. And McKeever with 12. So he has finally arrived. It took him thir uh, until third quarter to get here. Reverse layup by Coker is no good. Meanwhile, Buffalo can cut this down to a Single-digit deficit. Carr with it. Left wing. Over to McKeever. McKeever working on Randall. Ten seconds. Pullback. Jumper. No good. Back of the iron. Back the other way. Comes Ullman to Crouch. Crouch with Carruthers. To a great play by Jerese Crouch. As A.G. came at the last minute to try and block it. But Crouch finishes. And Almond, who got the rebound, very unselfish, could have taken it himself, gave it to Therese, who was streaking towards the basket. Ag, one on one with Randall, had it knocked away. Ag steps back, floater, can't get it to go in and out. Back the other way comes Rochester. Four minutes left to go here in this third quarter, and Coach Robert Spawn upset, takes a 20-second timeout, so we'll keep it here. But uh, the energy from Rochester, not good. The energy is not good. And they're playing down to Buffalo's level, Kevin. Well, they just traded baskets after that timeout. Buffalo on a 2013 run here in the, or I should say outscoring Rochester 20 to 13 before that timeout. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, Randall missed a shot right off the timeout. And certainly bringing the three guards in, he wanted to make a statement. But uh, Buffalo's not done. They're not giving up. They certainly did not uh, go in the locker room after the first half and say there's no way we're going to be able to do this. So down the stretch. That, that is the new look, by the way, the rest with no hair. We, we, we covered that earlier. <laughs> that's our head ref. You're very, you're, you're very happy about that, aren't you? Me? That's Personally? A that's a new look. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm really happy for you. For, for us broadcasters who are on our way there. <laughs> I, you have less hair than me, but you have the potential of having much more. Yeah, for some strange reason. Well, you know, it's it's uh, I, it, it's great to be able to cut it all the way down. Well, this is but what this is what marriage and kids and three dogs have done to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing it all. Oh, with jumper there by Coker, no good. Buffalo coming right back at Rochester, McKeever. Drives right towards the hole, Ooh. swings it around. They're going to call it offensive, yeah. offensive foul on McKeever. Or no, is it going to be on Moore? I don't know. They seem confused. Uh, looks like it's going to yep. be on uh, McKeever, yep, who they, ran uh, into Darren Moore. Let's see if Dar Darren Moore's set, sort of set, not quite. He's yeah, still he's moving. He's got his hands up. but Well, you know what? He, <laughs> he ran into his space. He certainly wasn't set. Ralphie Holmes thought about a three, pulled it back down. Randall have to set up the offense again. Carruthers on him defensively. Breaks away from him. Draws speed on a defensive switch. Over to Ralphie Holmes. Holmes, baseline, cut off there. No place to go. Darren Moore, six on the shot clock. Randall pops for three. That's good. Kyle Randall from downtown. Big shot there. They needed that one, Kevin. Yeah, that's what Coach Spahn was looking for before that last timeout. Ten points for Randall off the bench. He has been a spark off the bench all season long for the Razor Sharks. Jumper there, no good by speed. Jump ball between Carr and Randall. And they're calling a foul here and no jump. Oof. And they're going to call it on Glenroy Carr. Yes, he can't are. believe it. I think he, they both started turning away from the ref. <laughs> and, and they're Robert shooting Spahn. if you if you couldn't hear that. Robert Spawn saying put it up faster so they know it's shooting. They did. And 
the refs not realizing that there was that was the fifth foul. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, they need to know. The refs need to know when the fifth foul is. They can't depend on the clock. Three minutes, six seconds left to go. Randall at the free throw line. Rochester 71-56. Stays that way after Randall misses his first free throw. Rochester second time to the line here in the second half. And for Randall... His first two shots from the line today. Coach Spawn, after having a discussion with Darren Moore, has a discussion with Dele Coker saying, you got to go establish yourself in that paint. Can't let Buffalo think they can still come back here. Brooks, down low, Carr, loses it, foul. And Carr wiping his hands because... He had that right in his hands underneath the basket, lost it. Thank goodness for the foul. 2.52 left to go here in this third quarter. The Rochester Razor Sharks with the lead. But Buffalo charging back. 72-56. We'll be back with the rest of the third quarter. Coming up next here on the Rochester Razor Sharks Broadcast Network. Welcome back to the Blue Cross Arena. Three, less than three minutes left to go here in this third quarter. And with 252 left to go. I'm trying to figure out what the holdup is, actually. <laughs> I'm looking back at the refs trying to find out why are they holding this game up. We're back. Not for us. This is Coker's yeah. foul here. And Carr getting a few back at the free throw line. So the Rochester Razor Sharks, as I said before, not only Premier Basketball League champions, they are undefeated thus far to start off the year. Buffalo at 500 and 2-2. Two and two. The Razor Sharks have not gotten the offense they wanted to see here in this third quarter. Buffalo, by the way, has been able to cut into that 20-point deficit that they had at halftime. Yep. Seems a little closer than the 15 points that they are down. Cooley going one-on-one -on -one with Freeman. Back out to Carruthers. Gives it up last minute to Speed. In for two and the foul. Antonio Speed is the bright spot that keeps Buffalo ticking. I don't have a very good memory, but when you said at halftime, this is Antonio Speed's game, you know, essentially to win for Buffalo, he's doing the best he can here with 16. Well, until Robert McKeever woke up a few minutes ago, the Buffalo team was only getting offensive output from Speed, and now he is added to that. And that lead that Rochester had has dwindled down to 12. And now it gets interesting. This is very doable for Buffalo. 2.30 left to go here in the third with an entire fourth ready to go. Gabe Freeman 
creates and gets the floater to go. That was artistic by Gabe Freeman. First time uh, he's been to the basket here in the game. So two points for Freeman. Ag steps back, jumper, that's no good. Tried to get the foul call by Freeman. And Ag <laughs> comes back with a foul on Freeman as Randall saw him. Hey, might as well at that point. Ag has been playing much. Let's uh, get him to the line to shoot because he's going to make that layup, you'd think. You can see here on the replay, Randall saw Freeman. And A.G. could do only one thing. Yeah, not a bad foul. Let's go. And Gabe Freeman heading to the free throw line. First one is good. So with 2.03 left to go here in the third quarter, Rochester creeping back away. Buffalo gets a little bit closer. Rochester pulls away. So Freeman with four. Got to make them all down the stretch. Four times the line for Buffalo or for Rochester here in the third quarter. Brother, oh, great pass. Brooks to Ag. Great pass and a great communication by the 716ers. And the man from St. Bonaventure scores. His fourth point of the game, Kelvin Agee. Allman, harassed by Brooks, comes on a switch, nearly lost it out of bounds. Freeman with it, seven on the shot clock, one-on-one -on -one with Cooley. Freeman glides towards the go. The hoop can't get it to go. Back the other way, Brooks to Carruthers. In for two, Brandon Carruthers gliding in. And what was a 16-point lead is cut right back down to 12. We're down to 12 indeed. Cooley looked good defensively, deflecting that uh, pass on the last trip down for Buffalo off the rebound. Ralphie Holmes working hard. They're going to say travel. Travel. Yeah, he can't believe it, but that's the call. Less than a minute to go. Rochester up by 12. And Buffalo worked hard in this third quarter. They don't want to see it slip away here in the last... 52 seconds. Brooks with it right side. Allman on him defensively. Moore comes out. No foul called. Finishes. They were trying to get a draw a foul on Moore. The whistle was never blown. And Moore said, I'll take the ball and the two points. Great third quarter for Buffalo. Scoring 31 points thus far. The brothers can't get that to go after working hard to get through a few picks. Randall will stop, pop, jumper, no good. Rebound by Moore, put back is good, and the foul. Darren Moore making the most of his time. And just when Buffalo could have cut this lead down to 10, Rochester goes right back up to 16. There's Darren Moore on the putback from that Randall miss. And Moore will have a chance to complete the three-point play. Two for two today from the line thus far. Free throw is good. 16 seconds left to go here in this third quarter. Shot clock turned off. Brooks with Allman on him defensively. Pick set by Speed. Brooks, wild shot goes up. That's no good. Off the hands of Freeman. He lets it fly, and that's no good. So through three quarters of play, a 17-point lead for the Rochester Razor Sharks. 81-64. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter coming up. Thank you for those watching on the Soul of the South ESPN3. This is the Rochester Razor Sharks Broadcast Network.
Back here live at the Blue Cross Arena, getting ready to start the fourth quarter. Rochester leading it 81 to 64 over the 716ers of Buffalo. Derek Spence, Kevin Hilbrenner, thank you for all those watching on Soul of the South Network, ESPN3, Rochester Razor Sharks Broadcast Network. As the Razor Sharks fourth quarter, not good, but it could have been worse. Buffalo trying to cut into this lead. Moore, jumper, back of the iron, no good. Speed with the rebound. Back the other way from Buffalo. Robert McKeever, one-on-one -on -one against Holmes. Gives it over to Carruthers. Down low speed, blocked by Moore and a foul. <laughs> he didn't like that. You know, coming into the fourth quarter, We've got a 17-point lead for Rochester. Buffalo, with all the scoring they did, was only able to cut into three points of that lead. So it's going to have to be a major breakdown by Rochester. And that'll spe uh, send speed to the free throw line. As everyone in the building, of course, it's the Rochester Razor Sharks. Was, well, they were not happy of that foul call. Speed's first free throw is good. They're going to need Darren Moore. Remember, Anthony Stover not not 100% with the elbow. I'd be, it'd be extremely doubtful if he returns. They're going to need Moore and Coker the rest of the way for the size. Second free throw, no good. Stolen away. Swinging it around. Omen for three. Can't get it to go. Moore had it. Lost it. Back comes Buffalo. Got to protect the ball there. Randall almost got it taken away. He got his pocket picked by Gerald Brooks, but he was able to make the pass. McKeever says, I want to go one-on-one -on -one with Moore. Loses it, then gets it to speed to Brandon Carruthers, who makes the three. That was not pretty, but it's nine points for Carruthers, the young man out of Brockport in his second professional game. I would say it was bizarre. <laughs> but it resulted in the points Buffalo needed to cut in the lead. Allman for three. Can he answer? No. Corey Allman's just having a tough day today for Rochester. McKeever fighting. Can't get it to go. No foul call. No, Randall back the other way. Gives it to Allman, who finishes. Yeah, McKeever was in fifth gear there. 10-15 left to go here in the game. Timeout for Buffalo. Almond's been quiet. Ten points for Corey. Corey Almond, who's good for about four threes a game. It's just having a tough time of it today, but his Razor Sharks team staring a W in the face if they can hold on. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know if... Uh, Hold on would be the word we need just yet uh, because they are up by a bunch, but Buffalo's not giving up. That is for certain. They're playing the second game of a back-to-back. -back. We knew it was going to be a, a difficult game for them physically, but uh, Buffalo's still going at it. You know, last, last time they came here, December 21st, at this time, 10 minutes into the fourth quarter, they had pretty much warmed up the bus at that point. That is certainly not the case here. Well, with uh, a lead for the Razor Sharks that, as you said before, in the Premier Basketball League came in, we've mentioned this many times before, a lead like this can disappear very fast. Uh, Robert McKeevers, Jeff Stubbs, I mean, any one of those guys gets hot, it can be a problem. Kelvin Agee, it hasn't been that way. As Brooks for three gets it to go. I don't know if they gave him a three on that, though. He was near the line. Yep, or the board says two, so we're going to go with 83-70. And, and Brooks looked like he got tapped on the hand there. I, I don't, didn't see who hit him. But uh, no foul called there, and 13 points, not an insurmountable lead. Fred Durs in the game was looking to Allman. Four on the shot clock. Ralphie Holmes has got to put it up, and he does. The floater is good. Holmes has been a great addition to this team. Brooks thought about it, pulled it back down. Floater, he gets it to go. Answers on the other end. So Gerald Brooks starting to feel it a little bit for Buffalo. 
Now they're just trading baskets, and if they trade baskets, that's not going to do them any good. One-on-one, -on -one Randall. Holmes lost it. Rochester gets it back. Back to Holmes. Stripped it away. Allman for three. Can't get it to go. Freeman rebound. Back to the other way. Stolen away. Freeman never gave up on the play. It was about to be an easy two until Freeman's defense turned it around. That three no good. Tipped away. And Buffalo having a tough time holding on to the ball. They finally get it. Stubbs jumper. Back iron no good. Rebounded by Holmes. Gives it over to Ullman. Ullman sprints against Brooks. And they're going to call a charging foul. <laughs> Rob Spun had to be held back there. Rob Spun, there is no one that jumps out of their chair faster than Robert Spun when he sees a bad call. Wow. I never, I don't think I've ever seen any Razor Sharks coach get up that fast. I was expecting a call there, but I don't know that it was a foul. Eight, 36 left to go in the fourth. We'll be back here on the Rochester Razor Sharks Broadcast Network. Brandon Carruthers with a basket. And Ralphie Holmes trades baskets with him. So Buffalo's Brandon Carruthers on one end and then Ralphie Holmes on the other uh, is the reason why the score has been increased two points on each side. Both with 11 points in the game, Tariq. Robert McKeever, one-on-one, -on -one, draws a double team. Out the car for three. That's in and out, no good. Rebounded by Freeman. Randall, chased by Carruthers. Carr came over to help him stop his momentum. Pick set, right through, stolen away by McKeever. McKeever doesn't have the numbers, slicing through, can't get the foul call, can't get the shot to go. Now he wanted a foul there, and the problem is while he's out running, his team, he's not outrunning the defense for the Razor Sharks, and there's a mismatch under the basket. We got an eight second call? On Randall, and uh... that is an eight second call. My dancing was horrible on the dance cam. I'm glad we were in break during that. <laughs> so McKeever hasn't given up, but he's not making the best choices out on the court at the moment. Well, McKeever is... He needs his team to follow follow him down the court. Well, the other, the other thing, too, is, is that, you know, there's no need to go one-on-one -on -one every single time. Right. Set the offense up. The ball come right back to you. Carruthers, floater, can't get it to go. Tipped away, speed with it. Trying to get it out to Brooks. He does. Trying to set that offense back up again. That's what you got to do. Seven minutes left to go here in the game. Brooks, scoop layup, can't get it to go. Speed off of his hands, Durr, back the other way. Ralphie Holmes leaves it for Freeman, who can't finish. Rebounded by Randall. Randall back out the Holmes jumper. That's no good. Put back is. 
Freeman's got the basket after all that. One thing I'm seeing the Razor Sharks today is they are seeing the entire floor. Buffalo is not. They're very, very much tunnel vision today, but the Razor Sharks are very aware of where the outlet pass is going to and where it needs to go. Down low, speed, off glass, and in and out, no good. Antonio Speed with a good move, but it didn't go all the way down. Randall back the other way for Rochester, 6.15. Left to go here in the fourth. Gives it to Freeman. Scoop layup is good. Another fine assist by Kyle Randall. McKeever one-on-one. -on -one, and he is very frustrated. And he's trying to get the last few bit of instructions and now it's going to be I believe did they call timeout I think well Buffalo is no nope, there's no oh, timeout. Okay. I no thought timeout. the Buffalo called the timeout it nope. appeared that way official thought maybe but the official fake. wanted to yes. let everybody know it was knocked out of bounds so it will be Buffalo basketball and they will inbounds along the baseline Brooks will do so. Six minutes exactly left to go here in this game. Brooks. Back out to Carruthers. Carruthers gives it down low to Carr. Shot blocked by Freeman. Given up to Ullman. Blocked from Stubbs. Back the other way comes Brooks. Brooks across midcourt. Swings it over. Carr. Baseline jumper. No good. Rebounded by Freddie Durr. Back the other way comes Rochester. 5.30. Let the go here in the game. Randall one-on-one -on -one with Stubbs on him. Back over to Holmes. Trying to say get the ball to Freeman. <laughs> A lot of contact. Plenty of contact here. And they're going to say T. They oh, caught yeah. Freeman. They <laughs> caught Freeman with the wave of the hand. Oh. Yeah. He's, he's got to understand that when he does it behind the referee's back, it's not necessarily behind the other referee's back. And he swung at him oh. uh, as if announcing displeasure to the call. And the technicals coming up in a moment here. Let's see. Are they going to shoot first? 91 to 74. That was one of those frustrating fouls where Freeman didn't like it. He did it behind the ref's back. But as you alluded to, Kevin, the other ref was looking right in the same direction when it happened and just caught it. And it's, you know... So now they're asked for the timeout here instead right. of shooting the foul shots. So with 5.23 left to go here in the game, the Rochester Razor Sharks still leading it, 91-75. We'll be back right after this here on the Rochester Razor Sharks Broadcast Network. Back here live at the Blue Cross Arena, 5.23 left to go here in the game. Rochester Razor Sharks leading at 91.75. Thank you for those all watching on Soul of the South Network, ESPN3. The Rochester Razor Sharks Broadcast Network, Rochester 4-0 on the year, Buffalo 2-2. Two and two. And out on the court for Rochester will be Freddie Durr, as well as Dunley Coker, Kyle Randall, Ralphie Holmes, and there's Corey Ullman. 
for Buffalo, it will be Hall, Brooks, Gatewood, Stubbs, and Carruthers. So Buffalo ball after the foul. Carruthers takes it up, and he's fouled. Yeah, Coker hit him. Coker did hit him, and he hit yeah. the deck. It was a late call whistle. Oh, my gosh, that was late. <laughs> no, as I, I Coach Spawn just said. I thought it was a good call, actually. Oh, yeah, he did. So let's well, take a look. We see here on the replay here, right around Durr. This is your golden eagle here. Oh, he did touch him. Yeah, he got him. <laughs> <laughs> he got him pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little late. It, it was a it was a late call. It's just I I think he was waiting to see if the ball went in, and if the ball went in, he probably was going to blow the whistle. And Coach Spawn basically Wait, saying, "Was that a six? Was that a six foul?" Uh, I tell you, is that six? Oh yeah, so Coker's fouled out. Yeah, so Coker. All right, so he's got Coker's thirty seconds to make the sub. Yeah. Although putting in the sub kind of takes away that thirty seconds. Plus the Razor Sharks don't need. No, he wanted thirty seconds. Yeah. But, but he walked right in. Walked in. Yeah. So now what the referee's doing is coming over and killing a little time at the table. So now, Carruthers will go to the free throw line off after all that verbal action. <laughs> Try to make a few free throws to cut into this lead. First one is no good. Coach Spoon is is fairly close to getting the technical at some point, but eh. uh, we'll see. You the you referee know, raises voice. One of the funniest comments I had heard from a ref, and I had never heard it before. He said, "Coach, you can say whatever you want, but you got to stay in the stay box. box. As long as you're in the box. <laughs> yeah. Yep. This is a new crew here. John Scully, who has his own locker room here, is not here today." And Mike Martin, who is a regular here. Randall being harassed by Carruthers and finally gets a foul Ooh. call, and he can't believe it. Carruthers going to get called for the foul. So Rochester will inbounds. Ralphie Holmes will inbounds the ball, try to find Allman and does. Stubbs on him defensively, staying close. Allman working hard, eight on the shot clock, trying to create a foul called. Will it be on Stubbs? Yep, it will be. A whole lot of hand checking going on. So that is Buffalo's second foul. 91-77 the score. Rochester with the lead. Holmes in the inbounds. Finds Randall. Carruthers on him. Looking to get the ball down low to Moore. Moore turns, shoots, oh. doesn't get the go. Randall, when the short guy's on the court, gets the rebound. It always impresses me when the guy who's the one of the shorter guys on the court gets the rebound because that's just the big's not hustling. Oh, I cheer for guys like Randall Carruthers. Oh, yeah. You know, who is not 6'1", and Guys like Kyle Randall, a little smaller. Although Randall's shown some terrific skills, great passing. Court vision. It's one thing in talking to Carruthers, he said that at this level, the basketball IQ has got to be better yep. as Randall makes the free throw. Us, uh, he makes the scoop layup. He wanted a chance to head to the free throw line with no foul called. Speed gets a gift and cashes it in. And they're going to get Jeff Stubbs for an elbow. So Stubbs is out. Stubbs is gone. That will put McKeever back in the game for him. 19 for speed, by the way, the leading score for the 7-1-6ers. So Holmes inbounds. Randall will get it across midcourt. 4.05 left to go here in the game. Randall, scoop layup, high off the glass, can't get it to go. Back the other way as woo, Ralphie Holmes heads into that first row. He looks to be okay. Right, that's Randall. Oh, excuse me, Randall. He almost took out our uh, commissioner. Uh, just a couple seats over. Randall. 
Randall trying to find somebody to get the ball to. Finally does give it to Durr. Down low, Holmes, and he gets it to go. Ralphie Holmes. Holmes with 13 of the game now. Brooks with it, right side. Down low, speed. No foul call. Oh, no, yes, foul was called as Randall went up to block it or at least swipe it away as he was getting up to shoot it. 10-5 run for the Razor Sharks. Buffalo working hard, but it is getting late. Yeah, Randall with a good defensive play there. He's got a bit of the arm. So Speed will head to the free throw line. 3.33 left to go here in the fourth. First free throw by Speed is good. Rochester sees their lead cut down to 15. Buffalo made that charge in the fourth, but not enough to chisel away at it. Rochester just continue to match them point for point when they need to. Corey Allman over to Randall. Randall moving away from Carruthers. Scoop layup gets it to go and in for two. Great drive by Randall. Kyle Randall with a big day today against Buffalo. Brooks out to Carruthers, thought about it. Speed says he wants to take a three. That's no good. Brooks with the rebound. His putback, no good. Moore over to Allman. Allman one-on-one -on -one with Carruthers. Spins on him and loses the handle. Hall comes away with it. Back for Buffalo. And they're going to get a blocking foul or a charge. I believe we a have block. a charge. I think we have a charge here. Is it a charge foul? Wow, Buffalo cannot catch a break here. Yeah. And we'll be back right after this for the Rochester Razor Sharks broadcast network. No, not a not one that you want. Back here live yeah. here at the Blue Cross Arena. 247 left to go here in the fourth quarter. 97-81 the lead for the Rochester Razor Sharks. And they will go to 5-0 on the year with the win today. For Buffalo, they are going to fall to 2-3. And, and be frustrated that they've come to Rochester yet again, Kevin, and not gotten a win. Well, it may be different circumstances if they were on the first leg of that back-to-back -back that they played this weekend. But for what we've seen today, and that's not because Rochester pays me, Rochester's got a little more depth. They've got a better team out there. And the battle will continue. Who's got the best backcourt in the PBL? Well, Jerese Crouch made a statement today, and uh, his play... Uh, even though Corey Allman did not have the game he typically has of 20 points or more, uh, basically made the statement for Rochester, and Kyle Randall is making a statement off the bench that is undeniable today. He is uh, mentioning the fact that your backcourt may not be as good as the second-string backcourt for the Razor Sharks. 
I've got Randall with 17, if uh, my numbers are correct. So a little better uh, execution here in the fourth quarter by the Razor Sharks there. And more. And Randall's got to be close to a double-double on assists, too, which I could not even give you a guess on. So they've reached the century mark, surpassed it. And Speed couldn't get that one to go. Meanwhile, Corey Allman puts it in for two. <laughs> and uh, Robert Spons is slow down, but Randall didn't see him. What do we got going on here? We got a 20 point deficit. Almond's going to get called for the foul here. And with a minute and 49 seconds left to go, Buffalo will take it across midcourt with Brooks swinging it over and around for three. That's good by Carruthers. We've seen Travoy Edwards in the game. First time in a while for him. He played a little bit in the second quarter, I would suspect. Buffalo would empty their bench. Step back jumper by Randall, no good. Edwards with the rebound. Brooks will get it across midcourt with a minute 20 left to go. Swinging it around Carruthers, another three. That's no good. Rebounded by Freddie Durr. So we got Philadelphia coming up next. And Erie after that. Yeah, they've got, they're going to go to Philadelphia on the 9th and then back here Sunday. We are back next Sunday. So they'll have that travel day from that Friday in Philadelphia and come yep. back Saturday and then play again here at the Blue Cross Arena. That shot no good in and out for Corey Allman. So not a back-to-back, -back, but what they call a home-and-home. Home. Marsh, that jumper no good. Ralphie Holmes with the rebound and with the remainder of the 35 seconds, the Razor Sharks will go to 5-0 on the year. And Buffalo will leave Rochester frustrated again. Not have won. Durr for three. Bang! At the end. With literally 17 seconds left to go here in the game. 10 seconds. The Rochester Razor Sharks. Carruthers with the layup. That's no good. Moore with the rebound, and that's the way it ends. A 20-point victory for Rochester. 106 to 86. And the Rochester Razor Sharks improve to 5-0 on the year. Buffalo will fall to 2-3 on the year. And we will talk in a matter of moments to one of the stars of the game. We're going to talk to Ralphie, 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 Ralphie Holmes. Holmes. Yep. Uh, he'll be joining us in a matter of minutes. They're going through their layup line. And so we'll get a chance to sort of talk to him about the effort today. Great first half effort by Jerese Crouch. Great second half and energy from Ralphie Holmes in that third and fourth quarters and the Rochester Razor Sharks get a well-deserved win here today as the Razor Sharks will play once again on the 11th uh, against Philadelphia, the ninth in Philadelphia, but then the 11th against Philadelphia here at the Blue Cross Arena and it should be Fun to talk to them. Ralphie Holmes joins us now. I wanted to get your thoughts, Ralphie, on the thoughts and the feelings for this Razor Shark team. Buffalo wanted to come in here, wanted to make a statement, almost did it last time. This time around, you made a statement for them. Talk a bit about today's win against the uh, Buffalo 716ers. Oh, man. Well, great, great win today for the home team. But Coach prepared us all weekend. I mean, all week. Oh, man. Coach ran us to the floor, man, just to get back to this game today. Um, we really wanted this game. We really wanted to shut them up because last time they did come in here and they got a lot of confidence coming here and they thought, it's, they, they, thought they, they, they could beat us. But um, we, we just wanted to um, come out with a lot of energy and set the tone you know, early on. 
Well, your energy was uh, infectious for this team. They needed to get it done. Not the greatest offensive output in that second and third quarter. The first quarter, you guys were running, and then somewhere along the line, Buffalo started to feel a little bit better about themselves in that fourth quarter. What did you have to do in the third quarter to say, okay, yeah, you can cut it this 20-point lead, but right. you're not going to cut too much? Uh, just to come out the same way we opened the game. Um, the first five minutes was real important to us. Um, Coach stressed that to us. And that's all we're trying to do, man. Uh, we're just trying to come and play with each other, you know, feed off each other, and, and trying to make the extra pass. You know, we're trying to make uh, Fluff, I think his name, Fluff, make MacGyver. We're trying to make him beat us. And, and we did an excellent job on that. Um, Darren Moore did an excellent job taking a lot of charges. And we just wanted um, number seven to beat us tonight. And he fell right into our game plan. So it sounds as if they gave you a little bulletin board material before the game. Were a lot of people talking about what McKeever put on Facebook? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it didn't go unnoticed. Trust me, it didn't go unnoticed. Um, coach challenges all week, and we stepped up to the challenge. And you got them, as we said, on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, which you were at that disadvantage back on December 21st. You've got Philadelphia coming in here. You guys go to Philadelphia. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you're originally from there. Is that right? Yes, sir. Born and raised. Born and raised in Philadelphia. Um, I, I currently reside in California for the last eight, ten years. But I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. Well, you have some family back in Philly that are going to see a player, though. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, if they get a gym out there. You know, yeah. last time we oh, played in Cherry Jersey. Hill. That's right. So, hopefully, I, I hope. I hope. They were talking a lot of smack, too, man. So, I can't wait to play them again. Very nice. Well, it was a nice way to get a win. 20 points uh, coming out of the first half. Or, yeah, coming out of the halftime and 20 points to finish it up. Nice way to end the weekend. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Best of luck to you guys in Philadelphia. And, of course, Philadelphia will be back here again for the next home game, which will be on the 11. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ralphie Holmes, great addition to the team. Thank you, sir. Great win tonight for the Rochester Razor Sharks. Thank you, sir. Of course, uh, the Rochester Razor Sharks are now uh, will walk away with this win. Their fifth of the season thus far. Still undefeated thus far here for the season at 5-0. and oh. Meanwhile, Buffalo, you know, Kevin, the, the tough part about this thing, Buffalo really did a very good job of keeping themselves uh, prepared mentally for it, but they just didn't make any shot today, Kevin. And that was what it came down to. No, they didn't. you got to play four quarters in this league. And uh, Rochester has had that uh, misfortune a few times of uh, letting teams into the game, but today that just wasn't the case. Great first quarter for Rochester and a great win for the Eastern leading Rochester Razor Sharks. Well, for Rochester, as I said before, they'll be taking on Philadelphia. And it's good to hear Ralphie Holmes talk a little bit about that. He gets to go home and that the flight want to beat the Razor Sharks. Um, but we'll wait and see what happens when the two teams match up. Remember, very hard to play here at the Blue Cross Arena, but very hard to go on the road, too. Remember, that's next weekend in Philadelphia on Friday night. They take the day off, obviously, to travel from Philly to Rochester and play that Sunday afternoon game here at the Blue Cross Arena. And Philadelphia winless coming into today's action. They've been close with a couple teams. Lynchburg also winless. So the Sharks go to 5-0. and The Buffalo 716ers go to 3-3. Three and -three. They still hang out in third place in the Eastern Division. Carolina still in there at 5-1. and one. They're still going to be the biggest challenge for Rochester later on in the year. Well, there's a lot of time between uh, now and then for those two teams to possibly meet up again. Meanwhile, for the Rochester Razor Sharks, a lot of questions will be need to be answered. Anthony Stover with that elbow injury. We'll look into that. Gabe Freeman, once again, with his thumb, uh, hasn't played at the level he knows he can play at. And he's in mentioned that before, but still great output by their starting point guard and Jerese Crouch. Uh, Corey Allman, not a great game today, but he's been solid all year round. So we'll wait and see what the Razor Sharks have to do to get ready for that big trip to Philadelphia before they come back home again next weekend. Well, Kyle Randall was a great spark off the bench for Rochester, and they showed their depth today with Moore coming off the bench, with Coker coming off the bench, everybody contributing. And while Allman did not do well offensively, he was in double figures, and um, great to see. Right, Rochester Razor Sharks win it by 20.